two portions. The first portion of my message is entitled, Your Purpose. The second half of it will be your calling. I don't want people to confuse purpose with calling because they're not the same. So today I'd like to open your Bible to will to Isaiah 43 and 21. I have three verses of scripture I'd like to share today. Dr. Robert Ferguson shared Isaiah 43 and 21. We're going to cover this again now. Isaiah 43 and 21. You guys say amen? Amen. I'm reading out of King James. It says, The people whom I form for myself, that they may declare my praise. Also, verse number 7, same chapter. 43 and 7. It said, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory. Who's actually created for his glory? Created for his glory. He said, whom I formed and made. One church Bible is the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians 2 and 10. Read as follows says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. What that is saying that you've been created, your purpose is that you may produce good works. Amen? Amen. God has a purpose for all of his creation. And that includes you. Finding your purpose can be difficult if you don't know the Lord's Word. The Word of God tells us why we are created and what is expected of us as believers. Today I would like to take some time in the Word of God so that you may discover your purpose. Once your purpose has been discovered, you can begin to walk in it. It's not enough just to know your purpose. You must embrace it and walk in it. Let us go into the Word of God and see what it reveals to us regarding our purpose. Today I'm going to be doing a lot of turning the pages. My message is not very long. We have communion today as well. But we're going to have to turn some pages. And the first pages I'd like to turn to the Gospel of Mark. And one of the purposes for God's people, for us, is to love. And I want you to look in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verse beginning at verse 30. I want to touch on them from there. We're going to go to Isaiah. And really, we don't have to go to Isaiah. But uh, here at 12 and 30. And one of the questions posed to to uh, Jesus was this. They, they, they were asking him, what are the greatest commandments? He goes on to say here in uh, verse 30, he says, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like namely this, that thou should love thy neighbor as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So if you wonder what your purpose in life is, and you, you haven't came into what your calling is, is that you love the Lord with all your heart and that you love your neighbor as yourself. That's what you are made to do. Amen? Amen. So now you can be without excuse. Another one is, and I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew 6 and 10. And we just read part of that today when we was uh, reciting the prayer that the Lord was teaching his disciples to pray. 
they asked him to teach him to pray. And here in chapter 6, verse 10, 6 and 10, the Gospel of Matthew. It reads as follows, says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Your purpose as a believer on this earth is to do the will of God. Would you never say, my purpose, my purpose is to do, is to do the, will of God. the will of God. As your neighbor said, are you doing that? Doing and if they didn't answer, you said, I'm waiting. <laughs> Next, I want you to turn the Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28. And verse 19. Another purpose we have as believers is to make disciples. And here in 28, 19 is the great mission in which 11 apostles remain and appear with the Lord on Mount. And he says, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Part of your purpose to be on this earth is to make disciples. Many of you say you've been kind, you've been nice, and you kept his commandments, but if I ask you how many disciples have you made unto the Lord, many of you would say, I don't really know. Or maybe just one or two. But it's our job, our purpose, our calling, is that we will make disciples. Yeah. Amen? Amen? From there, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Galatians, chapter 5. Verse number 13. Galatians 5 and 13. It reads as follows. It says, For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but love and serve one another. You've called to serve. Some of you might not be familiar with serving. Hello? That's your neighbor. Are you familiar with serving? It, it takes some humility to be a servant. You know, the Bible speaks about if, if you would humble yourselves. And one way to humble yourself is taking on the mind of a servant. That means you are coming to serve and not to get served. Amen. Amen. That's part of your purpose in the earth is pleasing unto the Lord. From there, I would like you to go to the Gospel of John. Chapter 14. Verse 15. Give me a heads up on this one so you won't be sure too much on the title. One of your main purposes on this earth is that you obey. And this is what 1415 says, Gospel of John. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's real simple. If you love the Lord, you do what he tells you to do. And you'll look to do it. You'll be eager to do it. We don't have to force you to do it. Because you would think about what he's done for you and how he's been in your life and how he's kept you in the midst of all the things that's been before you. I told you the psalmist says, What shall I render unto the Lord? For all his benefits towards me. What would you give him for all he's done for you? Let's go to the next one. will be 1 Peter 1 and 16. 1 Peter 1 and 16. This is, a, this is going to be a part two to this message because 
it was a little longer than I needed. Matter of fact, a lot longer than I needed for this for this window. But it's dealing with purpose and calling. And oftentimes, believers mix calling up with purpose. Purpose is the thing, the, the sum of the matter. The calling is how you get there, what you use for. Let, let me give you a, a metaphor. If you were in a kitchen and you your, your purpose is to, to serve food, and in the kitchen you have all type of utensils that you use to serve food, all right? You might have a, a cake knife and a, a spoon and a fork. Can everybody be a spoon? What about a fork? All of them work together dealing with food, but all of them don't have the same posts, the same duties. When you are called to be a fork, look at your neighbor and say, be a fork. Be a fork. called to be a spoon, learn how to stir. <laughs> Hello? If you're called to be a pot, learn how to hold things. Even when they're hot. Let me get back to what I was going to do. Okay. Listen to this here. In 1 Peter 1 and 16, it speaks about something that you need to be in is greater than just about anything else you can be. And I told you this before on a number of occasions. When you look at the attributes of God, and he, he, has, he has moral attributes and non-moral attributes. His moral attributes is like trust, honesty, love, and mercy, and kindness. His non-moral attributes are like he's all-powerful, all-knowing, omnipresent. And when you take the sum of all God's attributes, that he's love, and he's holy, and he's kind, and he's merciful, and he's omnipotent, and he's unchanging, the greatest one of those attributes when you sum them all up, is that God is holy. And the evidence of that is in this verse, this verse right here is going to tie this into this. You can be a loving person, but not holy. But in order to be connected to God, you have to be holy. He can love you, but not allow you to connect. Do you hear that? Let's read with this verse here. Here, 1 Peter 1 Peter 1 and 16, it says, Confess your faults one to another and pray one another that you may be healed, that the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much. And that's not the verse to match my numbers here. So, 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 so let me let me go. But, 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 but I know the verse by heart, but this is what it says. I am holy, therefore you must be holy. Holy, it's not an option. You can be with all you want to be in the church. If you're not holy, God is not receiving whatever you do. Whether it's if you give your offering, if it's not holy unto Him, He's not going to receive it. If your deeds that you do, if it's not holy, He's not going to receive it. It's like offering something to stain or blemish. He wouldn't receive a blemish sacrifice, and He's not going to receive anything that's unholy because He is a holy holy God. So one thing your purpose is to be on this earth is to be holy. And don't confuse the two with being sanctified because an unbeliever can, can be sanctified by a believer. But he can't be holy. Because holy comes by way of God. And if you're not a believer, you can't be holy. Amen? Amen. So we wondering what it is that the Lord will have us to do. Here in the Gospel of John, also I want you to turn to chapter 15 in the Gospel of John. Well, yeah, I know I'm almost finished. No way. Amen. Just say no way. I told them that before. They're familiar with me, huh? And hey, here, uh, verse 15 and 8. This is one of your assignments. John 15, verse 8. You know this chapter to deal with, I am the vine and you are the branches. And he says, without me you can do nothing. But this way he said in verse 8, he says, Herein is my Father glorified that you may bear fruit, so you shall be my disciples. If you're a believer, if you belong to the Lord, 
you got to bear fruit. The Bible says that you know a tree by the fruit of there. Yeah. And there's some stories in the Bible where the Lord looked upon a fig tree that we're producing and he took it away. Hello? Uh, and the, van, the branches that don't produce much, he take them away. But even the ones that produce, oftentimes he prune them. And Christians hate getting pruned because it shakes them up because they want everything to stay comfortable. But we try to get the maximum out of what's before us. We want to be efficient with the Lord placed in our hand. So if you let a lot of little branches grow, it takes away from the growth from the big branches to get those little branches to come forth. And those little branches are not big enough to hold fruit. So what do the dresser of the vine do? He cuts those little branches off. He prunes them so that it might be more put forth to the vine that can produce fruit. As your neighbor said, have you been pruned? <laughs> if they say they haven't, say don't worry, it's coming. I've never been in a fellowship where there was any fruit that there wasn't that there was fruitful where there wasn't a pruning. And it's often it occurs yearly. You see people go look at trees that's in their yard and stuff and got a lot of little big branches and they cut those branches off so those big branches become stronger. So if you get pruned, don't get don't fall out of shape, don't get bent out of shape. It's for your growth. Hello? If you think I'm not telling you the truth, you can read the Bible. Look at your said, you can read the Bible. And then approve it. If you don't know what your purpose is, you won't walk in your calling. And that's what some of the issues are here in the church, in the house of the Lord. Is that they didn't know what their purpose was. Some people think their purpose is just to be saved. But being saved comes with a purpose. And once you know what your purpose is, it's easier to identify what your calling is. And as your shepherd, part of my responsibility is to help that be made known to you. Amen? Amen. So if you don't know what your purpose is, it, it's going to be very difficult for you to walk in your calling. And to, today, your purpose has been revealed through God. You've been told to be holy, to obey, to serve, to bear fruit, to make disciples, also, you should fellowship. Never forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Hello? Yeah. You remember I gave you a story about the defense of the sheep. They are, they are the glorious instinct. They have a glorious instinct. What that means is they, they are social. They like being together. So what they do as a defense from the enemy, because they don't have no fighting ability, they, they come <coughs> together and stay close together. Because they know when they stay together, it's harder for the enemy to knock them off. But when the ones that wander away, look at the you ain't one of the ones that wander away. Because if you wander away, you're going to stand out. The wolf sees you standing out there all alone. You're more vulnerable. So when you break away from the fold, you know what you're really saying? I like trouble. I like getting hit in the head. I like having problems. I like fighting by myself. How many of you like fighting by yourself? Raise your hand. You know, my neighborhood, I, was, I, was, I had a pretty good reputation for being a pretty good fight. Everybody, for the most part, there's some people here that know that. But one thing I knew, it's better if I had more than one or two people on my team. And when you stay with the foe, you're going to have more than one or two persons on your team. So I don't care how bad it look or what happened. Your feelings can be heard. They talk about you, this, that, and the other. Don't leave the fold. We don't want to suffer loss. We don't want our children to be wayward. We want our marriages to work out. We want our relationship to glorify God. We want to do what it is that he would have us to do. Amen. Not our will, but his will be done. And your purpose is to praise him because he's worthy of all praise, honor, and glory. Because if it has not been for the Lord, who would you be? What would become of you? What would they have done with you? 
I remember they told me I wouldn't make it to 21 I'm going to turn 60. It wasn't because of me, it was because of the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I'm fully persuaded now. I'm sold out. I don't have a backup plan. The God that I serve is able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than I could ever ask to think. And I'm the evidence of it because I'm a shepherd. I went from the streets, from the hood, to the pulpit. I'm sanctified holy and filled with the Holy Spirit of God. I'm not hiring. I give all that I got. I'm all in. And I'm a defendant, too. I'm all in, and I defend the faith. And I defend the sheep that the Lord has placed before me. Don't come here acting up on none of the sheep up in here. Don't, don't do it. Because let me tell you, this God is not true me, yet I still have some issues. That's true. I still got a certain thing that I still haven't graduated over this yet. I'm doing pretty good. I've made a lot of ground up. But there's some things you might just not want to present before me. And I'm going to tell you something. If you want to offend me, you try to harm one of these sheep, it's going to be a problem. Hello? So we found out what our purpose is on this earth. It's to glorify God. It's to bear fruit. It's to be holy, to obey, to serve. I know some serving can be tough for people. But with humility comes exhortation. If you learn how to be humble, if you learn how to take on the mind of a servant, the Lord said, then will I heal, then will I bless, then will I make you whole. Amen. You need to be made whole, humble yourself before the Lord. And you hear your pride. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, Psalm 66, 18, he will not hear me. John 9, 31 said, but if a, a man be a, a worshiper of God and do his will, him he is. If you love me, he says in John 14 and 15, keep my commandments. And if you love me, you love your brother. Because that's what you're supposed to do. Sometimes we have trouble doing what we're supposed to do because of our flesh. And the way you get rid of the flesh is quit feeding. Amen. You're throwing steaks and stuff up in the, to the flesh, you're going to eat them. Yeah. And as you feed them, it grows. It gets bigger and bigger. Yeah. And the way you have to take care of that is quit feeding. Amen. Some of you don't know this, but I lost 24 pounds. I'm on a diet, and I plan to lose 50 more. Oh, Hello? It's not that hard to figure out. Do something about it. It's not healthy. I don't want to just be spiritually healthy. I want to be physically healthy. And I need to be an example of how to be. Because the Lord has a purpose for us. And I want to walk in my calling. I don't want to limp in it. I want to walk in it. Knowing your purpose is not enough. You have to walk in it. Glorify God. Give him the praise he is due. Love one another. Make disciples. Fellowship. Bear good fruit. So he said, I'm bearing fruit, but this has to be good fruit. We don't want any kind of fruit. Just like they got all these little gimmicks to pack the churches up. We don't want a church packed up that's unhealthy. We want a healthy church. So if our church is going to be full, we want it to be full, healthy, full. Not just full with a bunch of issues and problems. So we want to do what we're supposed to do. So look at your neighbor and say, you've been told. You know what to do. Pursue the Lord. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek them. Be excited. This is only the beginning. It's so much more ahead of us. Next week I want to talk to you about calling. The only way that changes is 
you know, quite often I get messages, and then I get two, three other ones, and then I, I'm like, which one it was? You got just prayed about this one. And then I get this one, I get here, and I change it. But I'm going to connect the calling with purpose. Because calling and purpose are two different things. So once you know what your purpose is, then you step in your calling. And as leaders here, that, that's what part of this training is for too. As well, I believe we had 12 or 13 and 10 this uh, workshop this Saturday. And what's good about it, if you're unable to be there on a particular day, we have uh, a handouts and a DVD will be made available to you. So, look at your neighbor say, no excuse. And I guarantee you, once you, once you finish this training, you will not be the same. All you gotta do is walk it out and you see. The more you know, the harder it is for the enemy to take advantage of you. 